so I uh, guess from here I can't exactly go south, even if I might like to. So is this the place I have now keys to? What's that? A book? A primer for small kids. <gasps> yeah. Thank you. A flower tree where nothing really grows. Maybe in spring. A flower trow even. Hard to see the details. The colors all warm and welcoming. Cozy though. Let's see about this book. A textbook for the first grade in primary school. On the cover of Humanoid Bear is pushing a wheelbarrow full of letters. He's not doing a good job. The letter S is dangerously hanging from the card while E fell off a long time ago. Children should pay more attention. You hold it in your hand, the colorful primer. The title reads a primer for small kids. There's a bear involved. Exactly what I need. Hmm, this book will show you the score. Get you oriented with those basic concepts you appear to be hazy on. The anthropomorphic bear will give you the lowdown of your life. On what exactly? The alphabet. Flip through the pages. <laughs> Every page has one word designation, one letter of the alphabet with a faded illustration. Most of them are scientific and cultured principles. It goes as follows. Let's do this. A is for Asimut, B is for Purea, C is for Cosine, D is for Tiamat, E is for Ellipse, F is for Phlogiston, G is for Kamut, mm. H for Homeboy, I is for Egon, J is for Jura, K is for Collapse, L is for Laudan Laudanum, M is for Myriad, N is for Nadir, O is for Oriole, P is for Perillion, yeah! Q is for Quasar, R is for Rodam. Rotorendon, as is for sinus, T is for tricolier, U is for ultra, V is for vector, W is for war height, X is for xylophone, U is for ustava. Ha! Ah, that's a Finnish word. <laughs> ustava is uh, means friend, basically. So U is for ustava. Uh, Zeta is for zenith. That's it. That's it. You know the alphabet now. No idea with the, most of those words what they mean, but hey, ooh, I actually know. <laughs> Kim, I know the alphabet now. Uh, good. I also know the alphabet. It's a very useful skill to have, he thinks, for all sort of live activities like Radiant. And... <laughs> uh, can I give you guys the book? If, if I hear you interact with the book... Nah. I was kind of wishing that I could uh, make friends with these kids, but nope. Rock, no! Yep, they just just playing their kids' games. Which is understandable, kids play kid games. Oh. So not a... Kid. Little Lily. Hello, mister. A young girl, barely four or five years old, sits on the sofa. That's a young girl. She is looking at you with frank curiosity. She clutches a small stuffed animal. Occasionally she twirls it around. Where are your parents? My mom's outside and I don't really know about my dad. She gives you a bright smile like it's a good thing. Are the twins outside your brothers? Yes, she runs. They don't want to play with me. They're older and play outside. Suddenly she starts snickering. They look the same. <laughs> Something I can tell. Sometimes I can tell them apart. They look identical, right? I said the same thing. They look identical. She slowly processes the word and snickers with laughter. <laughs> so what's that? Point at the stuffed bird hanging from the ceiling. To so that thing. It's a Krause, she yelps, smiling proudly. You might be able to get the cart as good sight if you replace the broken squaw you almost certainly broke. I can't take the bird from them. So, yes, but what is it for? I don't know. Can I have it? I know someone who really likes stuffed birds. But I can ask, but I won't take it forcefully. Sure, just go and get it. I don't like it anyway. It looks angry. Oh, well, I guess I will take it then. If you don't like it, then I can take it. Do you know anyone named Rupi? Um, Rupi. Suddenly the girl gets all serious and leans in as if she's about to tell you a secret. 
My mom tells me that I'm a big girl, but she doesn't know that I can't say l or like sometimes I can, but then l. I got you. I I had the same problem when I was young. The kids. The lieutenant shakes his head. So what's the thing you're holding? Pointed to her toy. It's Lampy. He's my friend. Sort of like she holds the fuzzy beast up to demonstrate. Lampy is a stuffed lamp that admittedly has seen better days. One of the eye buttons is missing and the fur is scattered in several parts. Lampy looks soft. Yes, very soft. Suddenly she pushes the stuffed animal towards your face. Press your cheek against Lampy. Isn't she soft? Uh, she's right, Lampy is very soft. She rubs the white fur against your cheek, then returns the lamp into her lap, cuddling it. Well, thank you for the bird. If I can reach it, that is. Goodbye. Bye. The girl's large curious eyes remain fixed on you. Well, apparently I can just reach it. Ruffed Kraus taxidermy. Well, if she doesn't want it, then... Industrial coal pellets burn with an orange glow. Actually, I should definitely at least open one more thought spot, I'd say. The only question is, what do we want to start to think? I think... Um, I want to start thinking the date of birth generator. That sounds like fun. Let's figure out my age. My real age. Hmm, should I take this? That's really the question. The main reason, of course, to get it would be just to, uh, at the moment, be able to really know what the bullet is. But hey, that would be cool to be able to know what the bullet is regardless. So, maybe, maybe it's worth it, and at least having four of it means that we would be a little bit more successful with it. Even if most of our things here are pretty good that bad. But I guess, sure. I don't know anything else I want to take more, so... There was nothing else, right? No. Not from what I can see, at least. Bye-bye, Lily. You're a kind girl. Thank you for giving us a little she crop with Lampy and then even saying that we can take the bird. It's very kind of you. I kind of wish to be able to repay that somehow for you, but I don't know exactly how. But I would like to. Let's check the goddamn bullet again. Shall we? Interact. So let's see. You have similar rifle. So let's try legendary 83% chance. So it's okay. Yay. So legendary success. A rifle. Revolutionary period. Your bullet looks to be an old 4.46 millimeter from the soldiers left over from the turn of the century. Probably an antique or a retrofitted antique make. The 446 caliber was widely used with the Pelemakraf rifle, a Revanchalian manufacturer. The BM mod dominated the battlefield of the Insulidian theater of the Ante Sentinel Revolution 50 years ago. Incidentally, you have just such a rifle with you, the dusty old thing you found hidden in the basement below the commercial area. It's unusable, sadly. If it were, the bullet would probably fit the chamber. Is everyone still making these rifles? No, but Sielekar, a major firearm, and firearm manufacturer, ended up with the Sulper after the war. So there are still a lot of these old military rifles floating around, usually broken. The quality was appalling. So who is this Pele Makrav rifles these days? Antique and twists, Quarela fighters in distant countries, a few lucky jamrock bangers. You're looking for the same thing you found in the hidden weapon cache, only in working order. Hmm. The lieutenant shot something down in his notebook. Uh, what are you thinking? Bullet. I think I know where this came from. Tangled the back thoughtfully. Uh, okay, and... and... The shot probably came from a Bele Makrav rifle. An antique. That makes sense. There, are, there can't be many breech-loading rifles floating around in Martinis. Or anywhere in Revanchol, really. That's uh, probably a good thing. He nods. 
I have to hand it to the monarchists. It's quite admirable that they took the advice of criminologists last century and banned the use of breech loaders in peacetime. Uh, some new RCM recruits get impatient with their muscle loaders once they're trained with military-grade weapons, but they realize it's worth it in the end. Makes you consider every shot. I like it. Uh, imagine if everyone, cops, citizens, had access to firearms that could shoot multiple rounds without pausing to reload. After the first shot, the second, third, and so on come much easier. True enough, makes sense. Well enough. But back to the investigation. Hmm... So could the victim have been mixed up with some foreign guerrilla fighters? Uh, let's find out. Next step, finding the gun itself. Indeed. So the bullet has nothing more to say. For now, at the very least. Probably never, <laughs> but still. You know what I mean, I'm sure. So is this the place I'm supposedly able to go and stay in? You can see into the house from this angle. Inside you hear the ghosts out of some kind of heater sputtering. Money. Money is good. Shack door. The door has been seen better days. The layer paint has started to peel off due to the salt and wind from the sea. Even the lock looks slightly rusted. Unlock the shack door with the key. I'll wait outside to give you some time and privacy to check out your new living arrangements and look for any signs of rupee. Uh, but just so you know. After we're done with the day, I'll still be staying in the Verlin in racks for tonight. We'll meet in front of the shack in the morning. Of course. The key turns with a satisfying click. You can enter the shack now. Let's check it quickly, but uh, it's not like I'm gonna be staying here right now. Obviously, enough. we have plenty of stuff that we wanna be doing. But uh, just go and check at least. The floorboards creak under your step. What's in here? Loose floorboard. As you look the, uh, look the floorboards in this corner of the shack, it's clear one of them isn't quite level with the others. Maybe there's something hidden behind or underneath it, I mean. The edge of the floorboard next to it looks scratched. Move the board aside. The hollow space underneath the floorboards is dark and damp. You can barely make out the mixture of sand and sawdust below. What's in here? Nothing particular catches your eye. Looks like more reeds. There might be something hidden inside the sand, though. Something bad. Something night... Someone's night thoughts. A last resort. A bad idea. Search through the sand and sawdust. Actually, now I know. I'm pretty sure Rupee is the girl that bought my gun. Like, it was said that someone bought the gun. I feel that it must be Rupee. She wanted to flee, she got the gun too and everything. It just seems right. Search through the sand and sawdust. If we are really lucky, I would find the gun from here, but <laughs> probably not. You stick your hand and start combing through the sand. Try, not like outside, find dust and then... Something ha hard wrapped in paper. What is it? A small cylindric object. You pull it out? A bullet. Just a bullet. A bullet. Interesting. The floorboard doesn't care, but maybe the washerwoman does. You have enough to confront her with. It's extra ammunition. She's locked and loaded, ready to fight some cops. Holding the bullet, you get the feeling this isn't ammunition against you. It's for herself. Probably yes. This intricate heat engine hums quietly, giving out pleasant warmth. So it's her own bullet. Makes sense. Old science fiction magazines, books about bird watching, an almanac from uh, 39. A brisk coastal wind still howls against the window of the shack. Occasionally the waves crawl in under the foundation, producing a low hum. Listen. The room feels muffled, like you pulled your hat over your ears. Outside it is cold and windy, but you're inside and it feels safe and warm. What is this place to you? Hmm. 
my forward base for the coastal part of the operation. Overhead, you hear the forlorn shriek of seagulls. For far below the birds, a wooden proud walk filled with abundant stands, tables and benches echoes from a long lost time. A middle-aged man stands in a rundown shack on the edge of the fishing village, listening to the heater hum on the wall. This feels like a cozy hideout. Who are you talking to? There's no one here. Not even gold. Well, thank you, strange sensation, for a fair assessment of the current situation. Outside, the howl of the wind has picked up. The waves crash against the stills again. It's as if you think the thought, but in someone else's voice. Revanchol forever. Interesting. On the table you see a bowl of water, bowl of water even, a rough soap, and next to it a small hand mirror. A straight razor soaks inside the wash basin. Time to shave, get this muffin shops off. <laughs> Is shaving the right call? The water reflects back a vague image of your face, nose pulpus and red, hair unkept, wrinkles lining the eyes and forehead. The stage is gigantic stench. First was the smell of death of yourself. Thank god you didn't go in there barehanded. That smell is notoriously difficult to get off yourself and your clothes dough and cleaning up takes a while. But man persists and after 15 minutes pass you look almost presentable. Sort of. The sudden absence of the morbid dead eat tissue smells instantly lifts your spirits. Yay! <laughs> Even if I didn't need the healing to be honest, but let's see if I can shave. I had such a bad feeling that I'm gonna fail. <laughs> like an artist with a brush or a master swordsman used a small mirror and a straight razor with some soap to remove all that unkept hair from below the nose line. The sharp blade saves against your skin, producing a scratching sound. The surface underneath the beard feels tender, the air brushing against its chilly. Feel your clean shaven cheeks. They feel so smooth, surprisingly so, a feeling of freshness overcomes you, as if you just came from a cold bath. Was saving the right call? The water reflects back a vague image of your clean-shaven face. Despite the pulpous nose and kept hair and persistent swelling, you look a little younger, maybe. You almost look like a professional, almost. <laughs> the beardless nature of your cheeks makes the expression seem even more like a terrifying grimace though, says the succession. Maybe, maybe so. You see the waves, the sea and the church. An old mirror hangs on the wall. You see your reflection in it. The expression fixed on your clean-shaven face. You're still not accustomed to it. Yeah. Even if I heard about the <laughs> oh, oh but it's just yeah these things are pretty much impossible let's see did i have any electric chemistry stuff that i could add to myself or the other thing well those clothes have electrochemistry let's put those there because i used them before I guess these pants actually are the ones that I should then wear. Or these pants doesn't really matter. And the... which one was the other one? <laughs> I completely forgot, was it? Oh yeah, encyclopedia, there's nothing I can do about that, so... Yeah, still absolutely zero chance. Sure, I'll try the encyclopedia because it's pretty much possi impossible to s succeed. Like the rest of you, it comes from a bad place somewhere in the past. That's all you know for now. Yeah, it certainly is. I'll just chase back into this then. No time to rest yet. The bed is comforting if a bit run town. Still, you've earned a rest. No, not yet. Just wanted to check. Check quickly, nonetheless, the option that is there anything to spot or is that all? Oh yeah, we actually, our <laughs> image here even changed, which is interesting. <laughs> yes. So, point to your face. I shaved. Uh, yes, um, uh, the left hand stares at your shaven face, his eyes narrowed. 
Uh, he mumbles. I don't know what to say. He coughs. Perhaps. I knew I shouldn't have saved. I knew it, and I still did it. What an idiot. Uh, no, no, it's uh, okay, I guess. He keeps staring at you, Tom found it. Uh, I may have preferred the modern shops. They sort of seem to cover the his tops. <laughs> uh, either way, good on you. The, the lieutenant gathers him. Uh, you were saying? <laughs> oh, well. By the way, I found something. Our tenant, the policeman. I hope the waves don't keep you up at night. What can I help you with? You don't... well, we'll see about that, I don't know yet. Why was there a bullet under the floorboards in your shack? God damn that girl, she murmurs softly. A bullet. The lieutenant turns to you and gives you a little nod. Then turns to the washerwoman. Uh, you didn't put it there, did you? She did. Gone and hit things in there, she shakes her head. She's usually a good tenant and not a stupid one either. You rented the room for her? The old woman sits in silence, her hands moving into the water bucket. Some water slosses over the edge. Slowly she speaks, wringing out a rat. Yes, I'll let my room to that. I let my room to that, Ruby girl. As I've done before when she's been in trouble or just looking for solitude. I've made it clear we welcome all kinds of people here. When was this? She came last Friday, left on Monday in a hurry. She wrinkled, hand neat a blue rack in the water. What has she gotten herself into that girl? She seems genuinely worried about her previous tenants. She's seen her hiding out from trouble before, but this seems different. Uh, that's for the police to find out. The lieutenant takes out the familiar blue notebook. Uh, right then, please answer his question to the best of your ability. I'm sure we have a few. So, you said she left on Monday. Uh, yes, early with the docks. Around 8 o'clock, I think. Is the room exactly as she left it? I cleaned it like I always do. Was there anything else there? No. The truth, sire. What is she like, Rupi? She's good company, knows how to talk to an old woman. She rubs her gold hands together. At my age, you don't get a lot of quality conversation, so I really appreciate that about her. Uh, did she talk to you about during her last stay? Uh, talk to you much, even. No, she was mostly silent this time, kept to herself. What do you mean? She tried not to let it show, but I could tell she hadn't come to fish. Usually likes to catch a few lines, but this time she mostly stayed in her room. So why do you think she left a the bullet there? How would I know? She's a gruff one, but not violent. She doesn't go around toting a gun. She looks back towards her shack, thinking, I kind of don't believe it is Ruby. Ruby is at the moment the best suspect we have, yes, but... I... I don't know. I don't feel that it is the case then. But we'll see, I guess. You could ask her about your hunch that it was the desperate measure she if she thinks Ruby fills the bill. I have a possible explanation in my mind. Hey, do tell. A seagull flies overhead. It's uh, obviously a bad omen. It's an exit plan. Exit from what? Mm, well, the world. The lieutenant stops writing for a moment. He looks at you, then at the old woman. She tilts her head to the side, looking up at you, deep in thought. Then she makes up her mind. No, she's a fighter. She really believes that. Did she have any technical e equipment with her, like radio stuff? Not that I know of, though. She was into nice music. She once showed me a few mixtape milieus she'd made. She presses her forehead with the back of her hand. Water drips to the ground. Although I guess she was pretty handy with the mechanical and technical stuff, even fixed the heater in the shack. You should be thankful for that. Yeah, I am definitely thankful about that, otherwise it would be gold. So where did she go? 
I don't know. Few drop the calls. She tried to leave quietly, but the hinges on the door screeched like a cat in heat. Woke me up. I heard her rushing in those heavy boots heading up north. It's a peninsula. She might be trapped. After a moment of silence, she says, You'll never find her, you know. Her tone is without malice. She knows the ghost like the back of her hand. You only just arrived. I wouldn't worry about that, ma'am. We are persistent. And that we certainly are. <laughs> mm. If you drop the ghost, we go then. Are you sure you wouldn't rather stay here? Get a nice ghosty fire going in the heater? She drops the rack into the pocket. It's clean now. Seems like a better idea to me. No, you can do it. You still have plenty of choice in you before you drop. Behind the cinder block houses, all pre-war ruins rise to the sky like dark palaces the wind calls. Uh, I don't think I have more questions. Thank you. I'll probably come and stay during the night. One thing, officer. If you do find her, please go easy on her. She looks around. The air is getting colder. She really means it. It's an honest plea. I'll try to do my best because I kind of don't feel she is then that bad. She's a good girl. Whatever she's gotten herself mixed up in. But we'll see. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what's the truth. To be continued with Gita Rusha next time in Disco Elysium. See you all then.